I'm going to show you exactly how to get these kinds of results in just a minute. But first, I want to share what not to do. Because my first lip syncing generations were definitely weird, and I don't want you to waste credits making the same mistakes I did. Now, I've used a couple other apps to animate my images with lip syncing, and the biggest difference I noticed in the process is that there's an extra step. In some other apps, you simply upload an image and animate it to the voiceover you choose. In Kling AI, you have to animate that image into a video first before it'll allow you the option to lip sync. This makes this tool easier to mess up in the beginning because it's a bit more advanced, but it also makes it way more versatile. I had some of my favorite avatar images already ready to go, and this is my first attempt at animating one of them. My prompt was talking and smiling, and I set a negative prompt for walking because I wanted to make sure she was standing still. I would say that she looks more like she's laughing than anything else in this result, but I wasn't sure how lip syncing worked yet, so I decided to give it a try with this video to see what would happen. Here's that first lip syncing result I created for the intro of another video. With so many AI tools out there, it can be overwhelming trying to find the one that you'll love the most. How do you know which one tells the most captivating story? And as you can see, the lip syncing is amazing, but her mannerisms don't really match what she's saying. She looks flirty and seductive as she's talking about AI tools. Here's another example made from the same video. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one suits your creative needs best. Oh, and did you know that these AI tools are good for more than... Like I said, it's good for a first try, but it's definitely weird. So I went back to work with a new image. Not that it matters in this example. I just have ADHD and need a little variety. But take a look at the prompt I used for this generation. Subtle movements, blinking, minuscule head movements, professional, teacher, engaged eyes. And for the negative prompt, I went with walking, hand gestures, big movements, drastic movement, sexy, and seductive. Now these are the things I don't want in my video. And it looks a lot better, right? Except I don't like how she's looking off camera. So using the exact same image, I changed this part of the prompt. Instead of engaged eyes, I went with engaged eye contact. And I also took out the professional and went with confidence instead. And as you can see, this video looks a lot more like someone explaining something, which is precisely what I need for an explainer video, right? Okay, here, have a look and a listen to how this next lip sync experiment turned out. In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you the number one secret ingredient to making your Dali characters consistent. Not bad, right? So, with this success in mind, I went back to the other image I used and tried out this more detailed prompt to see if I could get a better result. Let's see what happened. Doesn't that video look so much better? Here, let's go back to my first attempt to show you the difference. I mean, if you were creating a romantic scene where this character is trying to be seductive, it would work. But it's not really the best for my own use case right now. So keep that in mind and make your prompts specific to the emotion and intent of your characters. Okay, now before I give you the step-by-step -step tutorial, there's just one more mistake I made that I want to quickly share with you. As you can see, there are three videos here made from this same image. The only difference between them is the length of the videos. One is 10 seconds, this one is 15, and this one is 19. When you're initially creating your videos, you only have the option to create 5 second or 10 second long videos. But 10 seconds goes fast when you've got a lot to say. So I was experimenting with the extension feature. I tried both auto extension and customized extension, but in both attempts I got weird things that I didn't like. If you look here at around 11 seconds, you'll notice some weird morphing hands flying into the frame. It was even worse in this video. WTF was that? 
I think the issue is that there's no way to add a negative prompt to these extensions. So even if you use the right negative prompt in your original video, it's the wild, wild west when you try to extend it. So for right now, I suggest you make the maximum 10 second video at the get go and avoid trying to extend your videos. All right, so now let's go through the process from start to finish so you can follow along. Here I've got another image of an avatar that I'd like to animate. It's similar to the other two images, so I'm going to use the same exact prompts I used before. I'm going to click image to video and upload my image. You can actually generate images right in Kling too, FYI, but I haven't played with that just yet. I'll copy and paste both my prompt and my negative prompt. I'll move this slider over a bit to the relevant side so it adheres to my prompt. Now, I do have a paid account, but I ran through my credits pretty quickly making my last kid's video, so I'm limited to my daily free credits until the month is up. You'll notice that changing most of these options does result in using up more or less credits, so pay attention to the price in that generation button before you click it. To save credits, I'm going to stick with standard mode. All but the very first video I showed you so far was created with standard mode. I'll play a bit more with professional mode later on in this video. Now where I won't skimp on credits is in the timing. I want the longest video possible for the most versatility. And we already know that extensions don't really work so great. Now if you're doing an animation with short punchy dialogue, maybe 5 seconds will work just fine for you. But I need the full 10 seconds in this case. So let's generate this and see what happens. And well, I'm not really thrilled with this result, if I'm honest. That first blink is really weird, and then she transforms into a much older woman. I'm going to do this again. I could do two things to fix this. I could try sliding my relevant slider even further to the right, or I could add another negative prompt. And I think that's what I'll do here. I also realized I had the wrong image selected anyway. It's the wrong crop for a video. So let's rate this video as a dud so Kling knows it could do better. Now I'm going to select the correct image and try again. The only thing I'm going to change is this negative prompt. I'm going to add aging and wrinkles to the negative prompt box. Okay, let's hit generate and see what we get this time. <laughs> well, not all mistakes are my own. Sometimes the Kling AI gods are just not on my side. I don't really like this one either. That sharp scene cut doesn't work for me, and she still looks a lot older from the original picture. And it looks like I have my relevance slider all the way up to where they recommend you use it. There's a warning here about using it higher. So I'm going to add a bit more to the regular prompt box. I'll make teacher now youthful teacher. And I'll add slow camera motion too. Hopefully that'll help. All right, let's hit generate and see what happens. Fingers crossed. I'd say this is the best result we've gotten so far. Though she's still bordering on being a little seductive. Okay, before we move on to lip syncing, I want to see if using professional mode and version 1.5 will make a difference. Really, it's having the right video that makes your lip synced scene look best, so it's worth it to get this part right. Then I can use the same video again and again for different voiceovers. It costs quite a bit more credits, but I think we're almost there and this just might be the final tweak I need to get this one looking right. Not gonna lie, I thought I'd have this done in one shot, but sometimes this process takes time, patience, and tweaking, so I'm glad I got a chance to show you what it's really like sometimes. Okay, our video is ready, let's check it out. There we go. This one is amazing, right? 
there's just one little weird thing at the end when she drops her jaw open, but I think with lip syncing that'll be reanimated anyway. So I guess there's something to be said for perfecting our prompt in standard mode, and then using the big bucks to generate the final video. Whenever I get a good result, I like to let Kling know, so let's rate this baby. And I'll save it to my favorites too, so I know this video is lip sync ready. So let's get to it, shall we? What a build up, right? Once you've got your video ready, just hit the lip sync button. Now you can upload your own audio if you want over here. This is actually all I've done so far. I've always used my own voiceover since I've been using this tool specifically for this channel. You already saw the results of this at the beginning of this video, so let's try something new. I want to see how Kling AI's voices hold up. You can select a voice down here. Let's go with this one, Melody. This indie film festival looks fascinating. And now you just add your text and generate. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Okay, so I'm glad I tried this feature out for you because the videos with my own voiceovers have been spot on and this one, not so much. Hey there, creative. What do you think of my new lip syncing skills? Looks pretty awesome. Am I right? Let's try it again with another voice. Let's go with the British accent, Siren. Hey there, creative. What do you think of my new lip syncing skills? Hey there, creative. What do you think of my new lip syncing skills? Looks pretty awesome, am I right? That's a lot better. And finally, let's see what happens when I add my own voiceover. Today I am going to show you how to use all my favorite AI powered tools inside Photoshop. We'll be transforming three images and I'm going to walk you through it every step of the way. Today I am going to show you how to use all my favorite AI powered tools inside Photoshop. We'll be transforming three images and I'm going to walk you through it every step of the way. Yeah, that's the best result so far I think. So if you can, I'd say upload your own VO for these videos to get the best results. Did you know that you can even make an AI clone of your own voice? It's true. With a simple text-to-speech prompt, you can create unique voiceovers with your very own AI voice clone. I show you exactly how to do that in this video right here.